name is Dave and in this series we're going to go over converting a 1980 Mercedes 300 CD non-turbo diesel into a fully electric vehicle. It's powered by a Tesla Model S motor, Chevy Volt batteries, and some other components. I um, want to go over each of the components, their function, how we put them together in the car, and um, see how it's all done. Um, hopefully this could be an educational resource for other people doing EV conversions um, and just a fun series to, to watch for car enthusiasts in general. Alright, let's get into part one. So first I'm going to go over a little of the basics of EV conversions in terms of components. So um, concept behind electric vehicles pretty easy. You have a motor, electric motor, um, in this case, we're going to use a Tesla Model S motor to power the vehicle. Um, you need batteries to supply power to that motor. Um, in this case, we're going to use batteries from a Chevy Volt uh, 2012 platform. Um, and uh, in order to uh, use those batteries, you also need to charge them. So we're going to need a, a charger for recharging the batteries, which will also come from a Chevy Volt. And you also need a system for running all of the 12 volt accessories in the vehicle, such as the headlights, the stereo, um, all of the 12 volt relays that control cooling fans and things like that. Um, and for that, you need an object called the DC to DC converter. Um, this takes the high voltage of the battery pack, um, in our case this is going to be around 380 volts, and dropping it down to the you know, 12 to 14 volt range, um, it's c considered the alternator of an um, EV vehicle. Um, so those are the basic large components. Uh, included with the charger, you're going to need to not just charge these batteries um, like you would a regular 12 volt lead acid battery, but since there are tons of lithium ion cells, um, you're going to need to have what's called a BMS or battery management system. Now this system um, uh, monitors each individual cell on the batteries and make sure that when you're charging them and when you're using them, uh, discharging them to, to run the motor, that the cells are uh, pretty equal in voltage. Um, what most common uh, modern electric cars do is use a number of tiny cells in series with each other to make high voltage. Um, so in this case, you know, 3.8 to 4 volt uh, individual cells all strung in series to come up with that 380 volts. So each cell individually is, is monitored to make sure that it's um, within the appropriate range of another cell. Um, and uh, BMS also equalizes those cells as they charge up. So BMS, very important um, portion of the EV conversion as well. Um, so those are all the main components. Uh, there's other things. We're going to need a cooling system. We're going to need one cooling system for the batteries and one cooling system for the motor. Um, a lot of modern EVs combine and have um, dual co cooling systems or sort of a single one with um, multiple selector valves, but we'll kind of go over the, the system that we thought would be the easiest to um, hook up and install in in our setup. Um, other things you got to think about in terms of accessories, uh, you have to have some sort of control accelerator pedal. You have to select drive neutral reverse um, with the motor, um, and you also have to integrate uh, electric coolant pumps, electric power steering, electric va uh, vacuum pump if you want the power brakes to work. So we're gonna kind of go over each of those components and what we chose to use for this install. The first component we have here is a Tesla motor from a Model S. Uh, there's a number of companies in the US and overseas that are making uh, drive unit packages that have their integrated controllers into them. Um, and the one that I chose was HSR Motorsports. Um, it's on the East Coast and we're on the East Coast, so I figured that shipping uh, would probably be more affordable um, than getting one from the West Coast. The next component we have is the battery pack. Uh, this is a visual of the battery pack from a Chevy Volt. Uh, I think this is actually a 2016 model. Looks similar, some differences from the 2012 model that we are using. Um, got this from a vehicle, uh, salvage vehicle, and I got a second complete pack 
from uh, another person who was selling one off of a salvage vehicle. This is a charger. Um, this is what you'll see in the Chevy Volt. It's made by Lear Corporation. Um, this is the stock Chevy Volt charger. There aren't going to be any modifications to it. Uh, it's liquid cooled. You can see the two coolant ports, the two high voltage ports. One is the incoming AC current, one is the outgoing DC current. There's a couple companies that make aftermarket controllers uh, in order to talk to this unit. This is the DC to DC converter. Uh, it is from a Chevy Volt 2012 and this converts the high voltage down to 12 to 14 volts to run all the accessories. Um, there's also some aftermarket units needed to um, talk to this unit and in order to make it operate. This is the BMS battery management system uh, that we ended up using for the Chevy Volt batteries. It's a product out of England. Uh, what's nice about it is that you could keep the stock BMS wiring on the Chevy Volt battery pack and then wire it into this circuit board um, which uh, has been designed to uh, communicate and read all of the stock Chevy Volt BMS module um, commands and, uh, and readings. So uh, this made it nice. It eliminated having to do a lot of extra BMS wiring to the Chevy Volt battery packs. This is the EVCC, the Electronic Vehicle Charge Controller. It will be used to talk to our charger from the Chevy Volt and the DC to DC converter from the Chevy Volt. It also integrates with the BMS. If the BMS monitors the batteries during charging, if something goes wrong, it will shut down the charger. Um, also, it has some programmable outputs we'll be using for indicator lights, and it also you can choose a profile um, whether you want to charge at 110 volts or at a 220 volt. This is the electric power steering pump we'll be using. It was pulled off a mid 2000s Volvo. Uh, it has power ground and then it has its own sort of relay system inside so there's a signal wire and uh, once you hook all those up then it'll trigger the power steering pump to come on. Uh, we'll have ours linked up to a toggle switch inside so uh, we'll be able to run with and without the power steering pump um, going and test because uh, if we're running on the highway and it's not needed then it's just going to be sucking energy that um, we don't need to be sucking so we'll have the option of turning it off while driving. This is an electric vacuum pump um, since we won't have any vacuum coming from a motor or a pump on a motor. Um, we need an electric version. This also came off of a mid-2000s Volvo. Uh, this will be creating vacuum for our brake booster, so we still have power brakes. And in this specific Mercedes, there's a lot of other systems controlled by vacuum, so we'll try and rehook up the automatic door locks and the vacuum reservoir um, to this pump system. The last component is an electric coolant pump. We're going to actually have two of these uh, to run each of the cooling systems, the one for the motor and the one for the battery pack and charger. Um, these are 12 volt, pretty simple. Uh, we're going to reuse one from the Chevy Volt, which does have some other signaling, not just 12, 12 volts on off, um, but we figured out if we tie uh, a couple of the signal wires together, we can get it to run like a normal coolant pump. We'll be running this off a relay from our control box. Now that we talked about the components, I wanted to talk about the car that we're putting them into. It's a 1980 Mercedes 300 CD. The C stands for coupe, the D stands for diesel. It had a non-turbo inline five diesel, uh, made 87 horsepower. Um, Tesla motor that I got is rated to about 400 horsepower, so I'm hoping to have some performance uh, enhancements compared to the original. I've had this car for a number of years now. Um, haven't really driven it too much. We found these monoblock wheels in a junkyard for 200 bucks. Threw those on and I cut the springs. Um, it sits pretty nice, put some wheel spacers on the back. Um, but yeah, I didn't really drive it that much and um, I was, you know, it's it's not super fun to drive since it is so slow, um, but it's a really nice car. The buy is in great shape, so I thought it would be a good candidate. 
What's also nice about this car is that it's rear wheel drive and it has independent rear suspension. Uh, it's a similar setup to the Tesla Model S. Um, so in place of the differential uh, is where we put the drive unit and um, it also uses two CV half shaft axles uh, just like the original. That we went over all the parts and the car uh, as an intro. Um, we're going to complete episode one and next time we'll be back showing the whole process uh, from start to finish of uh, how we installed the components, connected them up, did the programming and all of that stuff. So stay tuned for more EV fun.